The site that was chosen for this project is a critical breeding site for many species of fish that have a large impact on our ecosystem, recreation and commercial fishing industries. The riparian vegetation that was originally there was cleared for steam engines in the last few centuries. Clearing this has left the land vulnerable to lots of erosion and the waterway is at risk of poisoning by farm runoff from surrounding land. We've actioned a plan to replant the riparian buffer to reduce any risks to the aquatic habitat and the important land habitats in the area. Hello, my name's Simon Bay. I work for Greening Australia. I'm the operations manager for the Air Peninsula. So uh, we do a lot of landscape uh, restoration work. Oh, there's been some work done here historically. So you can see some trees have been planted up on top of the bank. And uh, days gone past, we weren't quite so discriminatory with the sort of species that we use. So uh, blue gums are essentially uh, an endemic species to Air Peninsula, but you can see that they've actually brought blue gums and other eucalypt species in from other areas. We'd like to actually uh, emulate what was here in the past, so we'd like to get back our, our local species into the ground. The drooping she-oak, or Alicasuarina species, so we'll be putting them in. Down lower on the, on the uh, area, we'll be looking at the Air Peninsula blue gum, which is a species that's quite tolerant to water logging. Erosion has a significant impact on the terrestrial environment and also, of course, the water here where the uh, the, the target is to look after the, uh, the aquatic species in here as well, so we don't want to run off getting in here. So hopefully we're going to uh, stabilise these areas so along the riverbank. Come over here, let us see the right time of year in the springtime, and we'll try and get those species back in here. We can incorporate some other seed from uh, north, more northern drier parts into the area, just to dry, and the river start to recede a bit. So we will actually incorporate species seed from this area and some seed we can supplement from areas north of uh, the Todd River site. I think you'll see far less reptiles, far less uh, small mammals, which have also been impacted by feral cats and foxes and things like that as well. But I think once you start to get those species in here, they've got places to hide, uh, some habitat for them, and also food sources. So yeah, we've lost a lot. Thanks to Air Native Seeds, over 300 plants of various species were supplied to us and tools were bought from Bunnings. Simon showed us how to quickly and efficiently insert these plants. Firstly, a hole must be dug. It must be deep enough to fit the plant, which is roughly 10 centimetres long. We used a small spade, prongs or large pickaxe to do this. Then we remove the plant from its cup. Once it is out, place it in the centre of the hole and fill in the dirt around it until the entire soil rectangle is submerged. Pat the dirt around and make sure the plant is stable and there are no air bubbles. The excess soil is used to make a lip along the edge of the bowl. This makes sure that when it rains, the water will flow into the hole, watering the plant. To keep the plant protected, a green tree guard is placed over the plant and is stabilised with a wooden stake. In total, we planted over 200 trees. We are putting back what has died out or been removed. We planted broom bush, blue gum, peppermint gum, sticky wattle, she oak, and Cummins mallee. Simon said that the goal is an 80% success rate. A successful plant will have grown completely and be positively impacting the environment. These plants will slow erosion, create a riparian buffer, and welcome back native animals.
This project has been a very rewarding experience for us all. We've learnt a lot about how important native plants can be in maintaining a healthy ecosystem. We're grateful to have the opportunity to be more active custodians of our landscape and we hope that in 10 or 20 years we can come back here and see an abundance of native birds, mammals and reptiles living in this habitat we've created. We'd especially like to thank the Air Peninsula Landscape Board for assisting with the funding for this project, as well as the Portland Aboriginal Community Council for allowing us to work on their land.